Hello humans, Master Dinnerflex here, and today I'm going to be profiling Chaos Paleos. It's going to be my first deck profile in the new format, and this deck has actually been very fun, and uh, it's got a very interesting concept behind it. So, back in OCG Japan land, uh, there was a deck that played Red Eyes and Ninjas and Phantom Knights and Traps and uh, no spells and traps and traps and paleos and traps. I was like, I actually get the concept of what they're doing. However, I did not like all of the cards that they were using. So instead, I put in cards I wanted to play. And this is pretty much what it came out to be. I'll explain all the cards, um, but let's get into it. Two BLS. Um, Black Luster Soldier, Envoy of the Beginning. I'm not even going to explain how good this is. It has a natural effect that cannot be power crept in the game because you cannot creep 8,000 damage. Um, Raiden, Hand of the Light Sworn. Uh, it's a Light Sworn name and a Light Warrior. And it mills your deck, which is all very, very good. And then we got Eren. Uh, this comes up a little bit every now and then, uh, her effect. Um, I found it better than any other warrior slot, and I didn't think... Warrior was more important than the effects, and this was the best of the warrior effects. So, yeah, so we got Eren. One Raikou. It's actually in here for its level, but non-targeting, non-destruction removal is all is fantastic uh but it's mainly in here for its level uh then we got two ancient uh three ancient cloak three ragged gloves three silent boots and one fragile armor uh these three you already know um fourth one you where you don't really use his effect but he you can banish him from the graveyard to toss a Phantom Knight card to draw a card. So it's like a little Destiny draw in your graveyard, and that's why I wanted it. Uh, its level is also uh, nice for a few XCs. Uh, he's just all around a good card, I feel. Um, in the extra deck, hold on. In the extra deck, there actually should be an Omega. Omega! There we go. Uh, I forgot to put that in. Nice deck profile. We got three Curd of Demise, because literally every card in your graveyard can be in your graveyard just fine, and it doesn't matter, and I'm going to show you why. Uh, then we got two Charge of the Light Brigade. Uh, it was really risky to play three, because you're wanting hands of a lot of traps and not very many monsters. The milling, it's nice, but if you already got two monsters in hand, there's no reason to go grab another one. It's just like the milling, and if you have so many monsters, it's not going to be very beneficial to you. Uh, and then one Rota, because all cards in this deck except one are warriors. Then we got Beginning of Heaven and Earth. Uh, this is why I wanted to play the deck at all, and this is why I thought the concept was really cool. You reveal three warriors from your deck, and one of them, at least one of them, has to be Black Legend Soldier. You can actually reveal more than one. Uh, and then your opponent randomly chooses, um, so dice roll, and then if, if BLS was not picked, they're all to the graveyard, otherwise add it to your hand. So, has a small chance to grab BLS, or a two-thirds chance if you want to go there, and in the graveyard it's fine, but then you're dumping two Phantom Knights. Ooh, that's a spicy... We got three fog blade, uh, the fiendish chain that's somehow better than fiendish chain. It actually has some cool effects on your monsters as well as opponents. But okay, two storming mirror force. You have to play. Uh, you have to play a lot of traps. Uh, two lost wind. Uh, solid, solid, solid. Like I said, most of your cards have graveyard based effects, so you wanna get them in the graveyard like the paleos uh i just move this around but this is the card i really like right now when an opponent's monster declares an attack negate the attack oh it's negate attack then special summon this as an effect monster 
and not a trap card. Uh, it's a level 2. Uh, it has no stats, so it can get ran over by anything. However, it's a level 2 for Paleos. And it works well with uh, Opina, so that's awesome. Uh, and its effect is actually insane. During either player's turn, you can send this and any other Phantom Knight card on the field to the graveyard to draw two cards. It's like Pot of Greed, so I really don't know what it does all that much. Then we got two Dinomiscus. Discards all your cards that you want in the graveyard while summoning itself out. Uh, a lot of, uh, Lich Holy, I fuck. Um, and this one is like fantastic because it recycles all your cards like your phantom knights uh it gets a really spicy tech back in the graveyard um very 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 solid uh again also a paleo so it revives itself um then we got morella uh send one trap from the deck to the graveyard you can you don't just have to send paleos you can uh send uh your fog blades for revival your Lost Winds, your Swords of Spiritual Swords of Revealing Light, which is also nice. I'm just going to say that last one. Uh, heavy Storm Duster. I only play one of because you already have enough back row destruction in here. But it's, it's nice to have. Very solid. And then, this card. Um, you can ignore all of this. During your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one Black Luster Soldier monster in your graveyard. Add it to your hand. Gee! That's so cool. Uh, also, it can summon... Uh, yeah, you don't even use that effect. You just It's discard fodder, cost fodder, mill fodder, and then it... Grabs back a BLS that was striked or one you put in the graveyard on your own. Super, super solid stuff. I love this card in here. Super fantastic. Um, now, for the extra deck. There's no side deck. Don't worry about it. There's no such thing. Um, break sword, two of them. And then two targets because there was like a lot of scenarios where... Dark Rebellion was worthless, but this guy was solid, and then vice versa. Uh, especially with uh, Masterpiece. This guy's really good against Masterpiece when you have gloves under it. It's a 3350, and it makes itself immune to monster effects. Uh, Dante. Yeah. Quantal Grand Pulse. I use this quite a bit, actually. Levier I've never made, probably because of the new Master Rule. Minerva, I make once or twice every now and then. Very good. Utopia package, never make. Two Opabina, probably the best. No, one of the best XDs in here. Uh, just searching and then activating. It's nice. It's very nice. Uh, Curse Javelin, which you can actually play. Um, because this guy's a level 2. So, nice. You can use... This guy, and then a Paleo to make. Um, you'll detach him at last, but you can detach, like, the Paleo, and then have its effect be spell speed, too, which is nice. Decode Talker, garbage. And then, uh, Cyframe Lord Omega, which I just put in, and you didn't see me put it in. Yep, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you all for watching. This has been a fun deck. I'm actually a really big fan of the format. I know Zoo isn't completely dead, and I know... Uh, mass, uh, I know True Draco is still going to be one of the best, but they went from, the thing about True Draco is they went from a deck that literally you couldn't play against to a deck that cannot sustain itself without card demise. To put that into terms, they effectively have the same win condition as, uh, barrier statues. And they play just as well as them. I don't think I've lost uh, in Rated to uh, True Draco yet. They just fall flat when you stop them. And it's easy to stop them now. And Zoo is not even a real deck. It's an engine. And it sometimes works uh, if, you have, if your opponent has absolutely no disruption. So thank you all for watching. And remember, Master Dinnerflax will take your soul. Ten minute mark. Ready?
ad revenue 